In the previous part of this video, we began putting together this science fiction sculpture, which consisted of a bust that we moulded and cast, and also started to scratch build a helmet. Now I've come some way since the beginning of this project, so in this video we're going to look at finishing off the sculpture, and that's going to involve adding some additional details to the helmet, as well as sculpting up a suit to complete the model. I also need to add some decals to add some further visual details to the piece, and of course I need to paint everything up as well. This is where we left things at the end of the last video, so there's a fair bit to get done. So the first thing I want to do is add some additional detail to the helmet, and I'm going to do that by adding in some small styrene pieces, which I've cut to shape to add some panelling detail. I also have some small pieces from a model kit, which I'm adding in for some additional detail at the end of these sections. For the back of the helmet, I also want to add in some conduit detail. So what I've got is some aluminium wire here, which is a fairly thick gauge, which I can bend to size. I've continued to add some small strips of styrene onto the top of the model, and as you can see, I've got a fairly decent coverage of detail now. Something I also want to do is to cut in some panel lines using a blunted scalpel blade. I find this really helps to break up shapes and to make it look like this is a manufactured item and I find this really adds a nice level of detailing. So I'm now turning my attention to what the rest of the suit could look like for this model. As you can see I've blue tacks on a few clear plastic egg shapes to the shoulders and I think they're going to look quite good as shoulder pads. But of course I need to add some additional detailing to the rest of the suit that the model is going to be wearing. I have these pieces of styrene plastic which I've cut to shape which I think that's going to look quite nice for the front of the model but I need to bring all these pieces together. So my initial plan for this was actually to do what cosplayers do and to use some foam in order to build up the basic shape of the model. What I figured that I could then do is use a technique which I've used for previous models which is to cover the foam in fiberglass to make it rigid and then sand that down using Bondo and various sanding passes to get a nice smooth finish. One thing I found was an old set of headphones which I thought would look quite good on the back of the model. I quite like the mesh here as well, so I think that's going to look quite nice once I've sort of integrated it with the suit. So I spent a fair bit of time building up my shape in foam for this, but in the end it didn't really work out. The foam moved slightly as the fiberglass and the Bondo was drying, and in the end I didn't quite get the shape I wanted. So I decided to try a different approach. So I've decided to try a different approach. I could of course sculpt this in monster clay, make a mould, and um, then cast it up in resin, but I wanted to do this fairly quickly. So I'm just going to do a one-off sculpture in Sculpey, cook it hard, I can then sand it smooth and paint it up, and that should do the trick. Sculpey can be a bit brittle, so it's not ideal, but I think it'll probably be okay in this case. I'm using some additional pieces of aluminium wire here, which I can bend on my mini anvil to size. I'm using a tiny anvil to uh, bend these pieces of aluminium wire to size. I actually found this thing quite useful. It's quite useful to have something to bend pieces of plastic and metal against. And because it's got a nice smooth uh, protrusion on the side of it, I found that's quite useful. So I've got the basic shape of my suit down, so I'm now going to cook the sculpture in the oven. Now, I'm not quite sure how the uh, resin's going to fare uh, in the heat. This isn't super hot or anything, it's about 100 degrees Celsius, so it should be okay. But um, I guess we'll see how this fares, and if this does fall apart, I've always got the mould again, so I can always cast up another copy if needed. So luckily the sculpture survived, and so I can now take the sculpture off the main form, and start gluing on my found objects, and start sanding all down to a smooth finish. I'm also using a Dremel to cut in some additional detail on the sides. I find these rivets are quite useful actually for sort of adding ports into, um, into hard edge models. They sort of look like uh, maybe air vents or something like that, or maybe a port for a cable. So I found these are quite useful for adding just a small amount of mechanical detail in here and there. Throughout this whole build I've actually found it really useful to use paper templates to draw in pencil uh, the designs that I want on the model. So um, what I'll generally do is draw the shape of the panel lines that I want and then come in with my um, blunted scalpel blade to actually scrape in the panel lines. So 
So that's looking pretty good. So what I now need to do is cut down the bust to size so that the shoulders don't protrude out from beneath the suit. Now one of the ideas I had from this from the start was that the mouth would be open and that you would be able to see the teeth inside the head. So what I'm doing here is just grinding away the inside of the um, cast so I can actually open up the mouth so there's space for me to put some teeth in. I'll be sculpting those up a little bit later so we'll come back to this a bit later on in the video. Because the helmet on this model is so bulky, I started thinking that the suit that it's wearing should also be quite bulky as well. And I thought that perhaps it needed something on its shoulders to give it a bit of um, heft to it. So uh, to that end, I started making up some air vents out of styrene plastic. I figured I can make a mould of these and then cast a couple of copies up one for each shoulder. Air vents are something that crops up quite a lot in sort of vehicles and things, so I also figured they'd be quite useful for future projects as well. So I guess a mech uh, with air vents in it is probably incoming at some stage. So all I started doing for this really was cutting up pieces of styrene plastic and building up a shape. And as you can see I've sort of glued all these in place and what I'm going to do now is fill in the gaps around the corners with super glue. And I'm going to sand those down so they're curved. In order to make this a solid object, I'm also going to pour some resin into the box that I've built. So it's one solid piece. That'll then just make it a little bit easier to make a mould so I can be sure that no silicon's going to creep inside it when I make the mould. Speaking of which, there's my mould and that means I can now cast up some copies. I've got to say that I find this a really efficient and really useful way of doing things. Uh, I've literally done this in a few hours. I've created a shape, I've made a mould and then I can cast up some copies very, very quickly. As you can see, the resin dries in a few minutes, and that's ready to go. Right, so there's my two cast pieces, and for the minute they're just blue tacked onto the shoulders. What I need to do is make some form of arrangement to hold these in orientation. So to that end, what I'm initially doing is getting them in the position that I want, and then I'm gluing a tongue depressor to the back. That's just to hold them in shape. What I can then do is come in with some pieces of MDF um, and various other bits and pieces and start building up a shape. So as you can see, I've got these attached to a piece of MDF and what I'm now doing is just cutting up some more tongue depressors and building up a rough shape. What I can then do is come in with some Bondo and start filling in the gaps and sanding that down to make a sort of a smooth uh, geometric form. I've also covered the central piece of MDF in styrene plastic so that it's got a nice smooth finish. So this is really just a process of adding Bondo, sanding it down, adding some more to fill in gaps, and just keeping going with multiple passes until I get the shape into a nice uh, smooth shape that I can use. And as ever, some undercoat is always useful for seeing where the imperfections are. Right, so this is what I've come up with, and I'm quite pleased with how that looks. Um, what I've done on the back is to glue two casts of some lighters on the back, and these are pieces that I cast up for a mech project uh, way back when. Uh, I've still got the mould, so I thought it'd be useful to cast a few of these up. And I think they look quite nice as a sort of a uh, back mechanical detail section. So there we go, I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm now in a position where I can come in and start adding some paint. So what I'm doing here is using Tamiya spray paint. I really like this stuff, it's got some really great colours and um, you get a really nice finish with it. I'm going for an orange and white colour scheme for this. Um, I used a little bit of orange on one of my previous mech projects and I really like the look of that. So I thought this time around I could go for a primarily orange colour scheme. And I quite like that because it sort of reminds me of maybe, I don't know, Coast Guard or something, some sort of rescue service perhaps. So potentially this is some form of sci-fi rescue suit perhaps. I think the colour scheme sort of implies that idea, so that's quite nice. So now that I've got my orange base coat down, I can now mask off some sections and spray on some white as well.
Right, so there's my base coats done. So now the fun stuff, I can now come in and start adding a little bit of weathering, some panel line detail and some shading. So I'm coming in with some uh, metallics and I'm just adding some paint chips to the edges of the model. There's always a fine balancing up with this sort of thing between making it look weathered and realistic and making it totally beat up. I didn't want this to look beat up, I just wanted it to look used. So I'm just putting a few paint chips on the edges of the panels. The idea being that perhaps they got chipped when the piece was taken apart for repair, something like that. And also on the edges that might knock into things naturally. Now one thing that I figured this really needed was some decals, some uh, logos and some warning symbols, things like that. I've got a variety of decals that I printed out ages ago. I made them for a, a robot uh, probably about 10 years ago or more, and I find myself still using them 10 years later. What I'm also doing is airbrushing in some blacks into the details just to add a degree of shading. What I also like doing, which is something I've done for previous models, is to mask off certain panels and give one a bit of shading. It just helps break up the colour scheme and add a degree of variation to the base colour. So yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. I think it's looking pretty good. Now painting the face was something I wasn't entirely looking forward to, partly because I'm not an expert at this by any means, and uh, particularly with an airbrush, um, I often find I don't really know what I'm doing when I start, and I just sort of fumble my way through the painting process and hope to come up with something uh, that looks good. So there's a degree of trepidation going into this. Now I had mentioned at the beginning of this that I planned to make another cast of this to do the paint on, uh, but as it turned out the original cast I made um, was actually pretty decent, it didn't get banged up particularly when I was um, building the helmet or anything like that, so I figured I could just proceed with the original cast. Now I haven't undercoated this, um, I, primarily because I only had grey undercoat and because I was applying flesh tone I didn't want it to come out too dark because there's always a degree of translucency to the paints when you airbrush them on. So I figured I would just use my flesh tone as the base coat and then add multiple coats on top of that. So again I'm using Timia colours and this is just a basic flesh colour. Now I have to say this instantly gave me a bit of confidence because the minute I started adding some flesh colour to this it instantly started looking uh, much more alive than it currently did. So that was a promising first step. I'm also just adding some black to the bottom of the cast as well and part of this is visible below the suit. So I just want to make sure there's no flesh colour showing from beneath the suit. So now the difficult bit, shading. And a good first step with any skin colour is to start adding some red in to give it a bit of life. Now the thing I've found with airbrushing is it's very easy to come in way too strong and start making it look um, sunburnt or something like that. So uh, very tiny amounts is the way forward. Whenever I'm doing anything like this I always try the paint scheme out on the back of the model or somewhere where it's not really going to be seen. So if it does go hideously wrong it won't be too obvious. Something I've also uh, struggled with for small detail work is the fact that you can't see precisely where the paint's going to come out of the airbrush so it would be quite useful to actually have a laser sight on the side of the airbrush just so you know definitely where you're going to be spraying. Now one thing to say here is that there's quite a difference between how it looks to the eye and how it looks to the camera. It doesn't look so bad here but to the eye it really looked like I'd come in with way too much red. Um, but what I decided to do was to get my basic colours in and then come back in with some additional washes of flesh to try and reduce the redness. Something that I've also found that works quite well, uh, which is a little bit counterintuitive, is to actually put some blue into skin colour as well. It makes sense of course because um, bruises are often blue, but of course the danger with putting blue in the paint job is if you put too much in it starts looking a bit bruised. And again you can't entirely see it here in the image, but actually to the eye this looks way too strong. 
So now that I've got my red and my blue in, I'm now coming in with a thin down layer of flesh. I'm just going to give it some light passes to try and lighten the uh, blue and the red and try and give it a bit more of a subtle uh, variation in colour. I went back and forth on the lips quite a lot, um, trying to get the right balance of red and pink, uh, trying to make it look natural. But I have to say, I was quite surprised with how this actually came out. Um, I didn't spend too long on it actually, and there was only a few passes of red and blue in there before I just started putting additional layers of flesh on top. But um, actually, I'm quite pleased with this. I think there is actually a degree of realism to this. Now, something that I've always tried to do when I do sculptures like this is to try and intrinsically colour the base material. So what I mean is if I'm mixing a silicon up, I'll put flesh colour in the silicon. It did occur to me that perhaps I could mix up a flesh coloured resin uh, for this so that I didn't actually have to paint the uh, base flesh colour in. Now, I didn't do that in the end. So I was thinking, well, um, if I have a base layer of paint, which is flesh coloured, will I get the same effect? But actually this has come out quite Quite well so this has given me a fair bit of confidence to actually try this type of portrait um, again now of course in this model I'm going to cover the entire thing with uh, the helmet so it's a bit of a shame in the sense that this has come out quite well because no one's going to see it apart from the mouth uh, nevertheless every model you make sort of teaches you how to do the next one so I think this has been quite a useful learning experience so perhaps my next model will be a full-blown portrait which I can paint up in a similar fashion What I also needed to do is make up some form of collar to go on the inside of the suit. Uh, so what I've done is to take some black craft foam here. And I've just scored in some detail with a sharp point. So one of the last things that I need to do for this model is to actually make some teeth to go inside the uh, mouth. This was a bit of a fiddly thing to do. What I basically did was use some FIMO which I sculpted onto a tongue depressor. So it looks a bit weird on its own, but once you put it in place, uh, it doesn't look too bad. Right, so pretty decent face there, so uh, time to cover it in a big sci-fi helmet. Now of course I was tempted to add a bunch of LEDs in this and have some uh, flashing bits and pieces and all of that but I actually thought you know what maybe not for this model. It might be quite nice to see some light shining down from inside highlighting the face but I just figured that not every model needs lights so I figured I'd leave them off in this case. Right, so there we go, um, I've got to say this has been quite an educational uh, project. I was a little bit lost um, when I finished my um, Green Robots project uh, from a few months ago and I didn't really know what to do but I knew I wanted to do something which involved sculpture and hard edge modelling so I just sort of started this without too much thought about the uh, eventual shape that it would take and I often find actually that those sorts of projects are the ones that come out the best where you don't have too firm an idea of what it is you want to do. So I'm quite surprised with where I find myself with this one, I really like the look of it. It's also been very useful in terms of trying to paint up uh, realistic looking faces um, and that sort of uh, made me think okay my next one maybe I need to take advantage of that and do something a bit more elaborate and something where you can actually see the face I've sculpted so maybe that will be the next project but we'll see where the uh, winds of creativity take us um, but for the time being thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting videos on future projects, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.